The Senate held a public hearing today about alleged rucking, Russian hacking rather, in the 2016 election. During the hearing, Senator Marco Rubio said he's been targeted by Russian hackers as recently as yesterday. In July of 2016, uh, shortly after I announced that I would seek re-election to the United States Senate, former members of my presidential campaign team uh, who had access to the internal information of my presidential campaign were targeted by IP addresses uh, with an unknown location within Russia. That effort was unsuccessful. I'd also informed the committee that within the last 24 hours, uh, at 10.45 a.m. yesterday, uh, a second attempt was made, uh, again, against former members of my presidential campaign team who had access to our internal information, again targeted from an IP address from an unknown location in Russia, and that effort was also unsuccessful. Well, meanwhile, Carter Page, who was often identified as a Trump advisor, but whom the Trump people deny ever really was, denied collaborating with the Russians in any way during an interview with our own Catherine Herridge. Here's part of it. The stuff about me is just literally completely false in every way, shape, and form. Do you know this former British intelligence officer, Christopher Steele? I've never met him. Well, that's not the only Russian news today. The Wall Street Journal tonight reports that former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, who appears to have gone off completely off the deep end, has offered to testify about Russia in return for immunity from prosecution. What to make of all of this? Well, Stephen Cohen is a contributing editor at The Nation magazine. He's also professor emeritus of Russian studies at Princeton and NYU, one of the eminent Russian scholars in the world. And unlike most people talking about this, actually speaks fluent Russian. Professor Cohen joins us tonight. Professor, thanks for coming on. So um, let me just say that none of, you know, there are a lot of strands to this story, a lot of things I don't understand. It seems pretty clear that General Flynn behaved in ways that are very hard to defend. But at the core of this story is the allegation that the Russian government hacked our election, is the phrase people are using, broke into email accounts at the DNC and, and over in the, it, uh, the, the campaign office and used those to help Trump win. Everyone assumes this is true. We're all operating the assumption that it's true. Do we know it's true? No. And if you listen to the hearings at the Senate today, repeatedly it was said, particularly by Senator Warner, the uh, Democratic co-chair of the proceedings, that Russia had hijacked our democracy. Right. And what he means is, is that the Russians, um, at Putin's direction, had gone into the Democratic National Committee's emails, which were embarrassing to Mrs. Clinton, given them to WikiLeaks, WikiLeaks then released them to damage Mrs. Clinton and put Trump in the White House. This is a very dramatic narrative. And they're saying in Washington that this was an act of war. Let me repeat, Tucker. They are saying this was an act of war. So whether or not it's true is existential. Are we at war? Right. I got interested in this, not because it's my expertise, but because one of the things I've studied for 40 years is Russian leadership. I've written biographies. I got interested in Putin. I'm writing about Putin, a long piece now. So I looked into it to see if it made sense that Putin could have or did do such a thing. And I can find not one piece of factual evidence. The only evidence ever presented was a study hired by the Clintons, the DNC, to do an examination of their computers. They concluded the Russians did it. Their report has fallen apart. The question is, why the FBI decided to use that private cyber, kind of private detective, let's say, as though the New York uh, Police Department had decided for a murder to hire a private detective. Why the FBI didn't do their own but investigation? Wait, and that's all we have. That's all we have, and yet night after night, I get people on both sides, Republicans as well, saying 17 U.S. intelligence agencies, mm -hmm. by the way, that would include Coast Guard intelligence, yeah. I guess they're on this too, right. have concluded that the Russian government was behind this. Have they not concluded that? They say that, but it's bogus. When Clapper, the head of whatever it's called, Director of National Intelligence, signed that report in January, technically he represents all 17. I'll bet you a dime to a nickel. You couldn't get a guest on, unprepared, who could name 10 of them. This figure 17 is, is bogus. But the point here is critical. The one agency that could conceivably have done a forensic examination on the Democratic computers is the National Security Agency. We learned yes. from, from Snowden, they're in your computer, mine, our e-phones. Yes. 
Everybody else who signed that report said they were highly confident. The NSA said it was only moderately confident. You don't get married based on moderate confidence. You don't go to war with Russia. You don't stage this theater that's going on in Washington that which could destroy a presidency. But there's one other thing, and let me leave you with this. When they admit they have no evidence, they fall back on something else, which I think is very important. They say Putin directed Russian propaganda at us and helped elect Trump. I don't know about you, Tucker, but I find that insulting because the premise they're putting out in Washington this hearing is that the American people are zombies or lambs that will find, I'm mixing my metaphors, any Judas, uh, uh, Judas goat anywhere Putin leads them. It's the premise of democracy that we're democratic citizens, that we have a BS detector in us and we know how to use it. But they're telling us at Washington, right. I mean like what Rubio's telling us. I mean, every politician who loses election here in America and in Europe is going to say he was hacked by Putin, and that's well, what that's right. And that's what Mrs. Clinton is saying. And they've also never demonstrated, by the way, why Putin exactly would want Trump to win, because Trump's for fracking. I mean, it doesn't. Anyway, we're, Professor, thank well, you for that. And I think it's worth. I don't know the truth, but I do think it's worth asking these questions. And I appreciate your doing that. Thanks for joining us.